Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 3, Video 6. Today's topic is relative velocity. The objectives for today is to know all velocities are measured relative to a specific frame of reference. Be able to relate the velocity of a moving body as seen from two different frames of reference. Here is a picture of an air show. So the air show pilots must keep track of their motion relative to the air to maintain lift and relative to each other to maintain formation. So to each other, the planes are almost at rest. To the observers on the ground, the planes are flying at a great speed. So as you can see, in order to determine velocity, we must specify the frames of reference or the coordinate system we are observing the velocity in. Relative velocity in one dimension. So here is a top picture shows a passenger is walking on the train. A passenger walks with a velocity of 1.0 meters per second along the aisle of a train that is moving at a velocity of 3 meters per second. What is a passenger's velocity? Again, as I said before, velocity is relative. It's relative to who? So the answer is it depends. There are two frames of references here. Frame A is a cyclist who is standing beside a train. We call that reference A. So to him, the, the passenger's velocity is 4 meters per second. It could be another reference B that is another passenger sitting on the train. That's reference B. To that passenger, uh, the velocity of the walking passenger is 1 meters per second. So how do we calculate velocity? So let's see. Have some definitions first. In a straight line motion, the position of a point P relative to frame A is given by x P slash A. This represents position P with respect to A. And similarly, the position of the point P relative to frame B is given by x P slash B. The position of the origin of B respect to the origin of A is given by x B slash A. So the last one is respect to. So the first one, that's the moving object. So we can have P to A, P to B, and B to A. So all three are related by this equation. x P to A, the position of a person relative to frame A is the same as position relative to B plus B relative to A. Let's take a look at the diagram B. So here is point P. P can be relative to frame B. You see here is YB. So this is the position of P relative to B. And this side, that is the position of B relative to A. So that's the train relative to the cyclist. And this one person relative to train. So what is the speed of person relative to the cyclist? Is this two add together? So the person relative to the train plus the train relative to the cyclist equals to the person relative to the cyclist. So this is the equation you add it together in one dimension. Since velocity is derivative of position over time, so this relationship also holds for velocity. So V of a person relative to A is the same as V person relative to B plus VB relative to A. So this may seem like complicated, but take a look at the equation PA. The first one is P, the last one is A. See that B kind of canceled. The last B and the first B cancels out. Similarly for P. So here's one thing you need to know. The position of P relative to A is opposite of A relative to P. Similarly, for velocity, you probably know. Uh, so if you walk away from the desk, it seems like the desk is going backwards relative to you. So those are opposite in direction. So let's take a look at this example, see if we were right using the equation. So we know person relative to the train, P relative to coordinate B, uh, or reference, frame of reference B, that's one meters per second. So person relative to the train is one meters per second. 
Train relative to the cyclist is three meters per second. Now, what is a person relative to the cyclist? That equals to person relative to the train plus the train relative to the cyclist. So you get four meters per second. Let's take a look at an example. You're driving north on a straight two lane road at a constant 88 kilometers per hour. A truck traveling at a constant 104 kilometers per hour approaches you uh, in the other lane, fortunately. What is the truck's velocity relative to you? So let's write down what's given. So you relative to the earth is positive 88 kilometers per hour. A north is positive. The truck relative to the earth is negative 104 kilometers per hour. So what is the truck relative to you? Well, truck relative to you equals the truck relative to the earth plus earth relative to you. You see E. Truck to earth is negative 104. Earth to you is negative 88 because earth to you is negative of you to earth. So the truck is relative to you is negative 192 kilometers per hour. That kind of makes sense because the truck is traveling toward you, going to the south at a much higher speed. What is your velocity with respect to the truck? Well, your velocity with respect to the truck is the opposite of a truck with respect to you. So you, uh, respect to the truck is 192 kilometers per hour. How do the relative velocity change after you and the truck have passed each other? Well, it doesn't change. Relative velocity will not change because your velocity stays constant. They are both constant velocity. Relative velocity in two or three dimensions. So we can extend the concept of relative velocity to include a motion in a plane or in space by using vector addition to combine the velocities. Suppose that passenger in this pink dress, instead of going forward along in the same direction as strings motion, it going cross, going to the side. Now, what is the velocity observed by the cyclist? Which is the same thing. Here is the person relative uh, to be the train relative to the cyclist. And here is the person relative to the train. So this two added together is still the person relative to the cyclist. So the relationship still holds the position vector holds. So is the velocity vector. This is the scene relative velocity seen from above. So here is <clears throat> the train's velocity relative to the cyclist. This is a person's velocity relative to the train. The two added together is a person's velocity relative to, uh, to the cyclist. So as you can see, we can solve this using Pythagorean theorem. So again, person relative to uh, A is the negative A relative to the person. So according to Pythagorean theorem, the person relative to frame reference A equals to 3 squared plus 1 squared. That gives you 3.2 meters per second. We can find, we can find this uh, angle using inverse tan, which gives us 18 degrees. Let's take a look at, at a, an example. So a compass of airplane indicates that it is headed due north. And its airspeed indicator shows that it is moving through the air at 240 kilometers per hour. If there is a wind of 100 kilometers per hour from west, what we know, plane to air is 240 kilometers per hour going to the north. Air to earth is 100 kilometers per hour east. So we know plane to earth is plane to air plus air to earth. Let's draw a picture. Plane to air is going to the north. Air to earth is going to the east. So your plane to earth is the resultant. To find a resultant, we use Pythagorean theorem. To find a direction, direction is the angle between tail and tail. We have used inverse tan. Opposite over adjacent, you have 23 degrees. 
So you, since this one gave you the north and east, so it's 23 degrees east of north. Another example, 3.15 correcting for a crosswind. So here is a plane's airspeed indicator shows, again, it is moving through the air at 240 kilometers per hour, and there is a wind of 100 kilometers per hour from west to east, the same as the last question. But this time the plane wants to travel due north. That's a resultant. What direction should the pilot head to? What is the velocity of the airplane relative to Earth? So there are two questions. So let's see, plane to air, 240, we don't know what direction. And air to Earth, we know the magnitude and direction. And we know the result and we know the direction. So again, plane to Earth is plane to air plus air to Earth. Draw a picture. So here is your resultant. So here is your uh, air to earth, that's the wind. So this must be the plane to air. See, plane to air plus the air to earth equals the plane to earth. So this plane to earth, that's the resultant. How do I find that resultant? This resultant is not hypotenuse. This resultant is one of the leg. So plane to earth has to be 240 squared minus 100 squared. That gives you 218 kilometers per hour due north. And how do I find this angle? Instead of use tangent, because you know hypotenuse and the opposite, you have to use inverse sine, which give you 25 degrees. Since you are going this direction, this is west of north. Check your understanding. Suppose the nose of an airplane is pointed due east. An airplane has airspeed of 150 kilometers per hour. Due to the wind, the airplane is moving due north relative to the ground, and its speed relative to the ground is 150 kilometers per hour. What is the velocity of the air relative to Earth? Let's see. So again, plane to Earth is plane to air plus air to Earth. Now let's draw a picture. So in this case, plane to air, we said, the plane to air is going to the east at 150 kilometers per hour. And we also know the resultant is plane to earth. That is 150 kilometers per hour north. We want to find the wind speed. So the wind has to be going to northwest. What is the magnitude of that? That magnitude, this is the hypotenuse, so that equals 150 squared plus 150 squared give you 212 kilometers per hour northwest, because it has to go to northwest in order for the resultant to go to north. So the answer is 6. 212 kilometers per hour from southeast to northwest. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.